Welcome everybody. Welcome to a Monday night. We are we are all set ready to go. It was a it was an awesome night. It was I knew that was gonna happen. As soon as I started talking, YouTube was gonna click a commercial. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it throws me every time. I was like, I can't, can't mute it. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for joining us because I'm telling you tonight's topic is one that has me sweating already. That's all I'm just gonna say. Well, get, that kind of defeats the guys, whole but... the, the whole anticipation factor of what is Dan going to talk about tonight. Well, John, you kind of put the description right there. <sighs> well, I'm giving them at least benefit of the doubt that they can read. Surviving those summer barn weddings, I suppose that does kind of send it in a specific direction. I didn't say how we were going to survive. Well, that, that that was my thought is that I think that we were going to have different interpretations of what it takes to survive or what why what you're trying to survive and that's what we're going to get into for tonight's show so so cubby you, you mentioned is your wedding you haven't started with wedding season we before we come on air we were just talking a little bit and you mentioned you had a wedding this past weekend or you have yeah one? kicked off uh kicked off my season um you've had sporadic ones but now it's pretty much every weekend here on out and uh at a it was at the <laughs> County Fairgrounds. It was a there was a destination wedding. They came back to celebrate and they had seventy two cases of Bushlight beer for all those farmers. And yeah, Dan's eyes. Yeah, and uh, twenty five to thirty young little kids just killing my dance floor because nobody wanted to get around them. So yeah, it was it was it was a great way to start. Great way to start the season. Seventy. Yeah, I, you just said it was a destination wedding. Were they were they carnies? No, they uh, got married in Punta okay. Canta on February 28th, and then they uh, they took 36 people down there and uh, and then came back to celebrate with all their local friends and family that couldn't make it to Punta. And then they did like a little short video um, that showed like all the pictures and this uh, things that they did down there and things. Um, okay, so they were destination to the fairgrounds. It was yeah. a destination <laughs> wedding and came back and did it. Okay, I'm with you now. I'm with Nobody, you. I, got, yeah. I got a little wonder and I was like... <laughs> That's a different type of destination wedding. I don't know if I've ever had somebody uh, destination to a uh, fairgrounds. Well, yeah, well, hand to God, and Iowa is not a destination place. I've never right. had a destination wedding in Iowa ever. I, I was going to say you're not in the right spot. If there were going to be one, it would be on the other end of Iowa in the north uh, northwest corner there, where there's yes. the, that lake, that one Okamoji, lake, that big pond. Yeah, yeah. There's one lake in Iowa, and that's where it is. And well, there's probably more than one, but there's yeah one it's, that would be. The, the destination the one yeah, yeah the destination one there so so guys yeah i want to let's dig into the the barn weddings because that has been something um and and we, let's talk about the prevalency of what, we, what the calls we're getting with that uh 10 12 years ago I've, I've never got a call for a barn wedding 20 years ago we had a few of them we would get here and there but in our neck of the woods at the time the few barns that were being used were mainly old time uh, establishments that that on most Fridays and Saturdays they would have an old time band or three or six, and the uh, the folks would go and they'd put up tents and park across the the in the pasture with uh, RVs or or tent you know camping out there, and they would have these weekend uh, old time festivals, and there were a couple of these barns that did this like every weekend from Memorial Day to Labor Day, and they were full all the time with different groups of people. Um, I think there were four barns within an hour of me at that time that were doing receptions once in a while, but mainly we're doing that. How about in your areas? When, when did you guys, you know, were barns always a thing? Is this something that has been coming on? Was it there? Uh, what, what, how about you get, start us off with that? Yeah, I would have to say um, really within the last five to seven years, it's got we, modern barns. They have some that they've updated. Um, some barns that you can literally see through the slats um, and there you can see outside. Um, that, that old of a barn, um, the Schaefer Century Barn, uh, is one that you can literally look through your slats and see outside from where you're DJ. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of them are modern barns, um, but just built as a barn, uh, and they're just growing rapidly. Um, if we did a barn wedding eight, uh, eight to ten years ago, it was literally on a family farm, and it was a working barn, and they moved all the tractor stuff to the side, and you danced, and you had to worry about power, you know, as blowing blowing circuits and powers and things. But um, man, it's just blown up within the last five to eight years. And, and I wish that trend would go away. And it's interesting you talk about that, that they're a nicer barn. Let's get we'll get back and we'll add that too. That's a good good uh, con, con, talk about topic. Dan, what about yourself? What have you seen for a uh, prevalency? 
I still remember my first one. It was about 10 years ago because I, I still remember I was kind of using some of my uh, my other equipment at the time. Um, the, the place was a, was very similar to what you talked about. It was a barn that occasionally the, the, the owner would have a band and they would play there. And that's kind of where it started. The first one I ran into was where he decided I'm just going to like rent this out to a couple couples. And and that was like the first one I ran into with anything like that. Um, but, but very much like, like Hubby said, you know, it's just blown up now to where it's like, I, I'm probably in a barn, you know, 90% of the events I do in a year. Like wow. it's, it's, if not, it, maybe that's a little exaggerating, probably it's closer to 75 now that I think about it, but still it's like majority of the time I'm in a barn wedding, a, a barn venue of some sort, um, just, everywhere they seem to be and and again some were somewhere in that style like i said where they had to be ends but most of them were working barns that they've decided to now do a venue with because that's what's hot so now dan no are you seeing where in in our situation there's three different ranches that have uh have, have are becoming facilities and they have a barn on the site in one case they use the barn for a small uh, kind of like a, a bachelorette type party, a bachelor party type space. And the day of the event, they have a pole shed that they have um, built where that's actually the reception hall. The barn is there, the outbuildings are there, so it looks like a nice little farm, and that's what they use. Another is they built a brand new pole shed that looks somewhat like a barn, but it doesn't, it's you know, not the, the traditional kind of uh, hip roof type of a thing. But it's basically just a pole shed. Um, and I think that kind of a concept is with like two or three other of the more modern uh, sites. Are you seeing traditional or are you seeing this this building to try to be a fake barn, for lack of a better way to describe it? All of them are traditional. They've been there for years. I shouldn't say all. There's there's two in mind that, that come immediately. But for the most part, they're all very much the traditional barn. They were barns at one point. Some of them are still barns and they, you know, just like where the venue portion is, is the part that doesn't use anything from the barn. Um, and then there was one that was, was very much like what you said, was like a pole shed type of thing. And that one actually isn't, that was more of a private property type of situation um, that they built a super big garage and, and decided to use it for a venue for that particular moment. Um, but all of them, for the most part, like I said, have been, other than the ones I mentioned, have been barns at some point and now gutted and, and turned into and to the reception. They're not use it's not used for aesthetics. It's we're inside. We're hooked up to power. We're eating in there. Like it's for everything. Hmm. Kobe, how about yourself? Are, are your facilities are they completely new facilities or are they just a refurb or what have they been doing mainly? A combination of everything, um, mostly refurbed or built to look like a barn, uh, modern buildings, but just built into the barn or the rustic kind of uh, things. Um, I did talk to a DJ in Texas, and they do have, like, barns down there. But what they do, like you talked about with the RVs, is they have cabins that families can rent. Mm. So it's like a whole experience. Like, you take the whole weekend, and your family goes down there, and they've got these cabins, and everybody stays within the cabins really close to barns. So after, after parties and uh, the night before for rehearsal, they're very expensive, but... Um, the, the, I think the thing that's going to be trending next is barns that can, uh, places that can put, uh, like little small cabins in there that can rent out to the families for the overnights, um, and make it more, more of an experience and mm -hmm. things. And, and that's a great point. That's, we're seeing that, uh, with many of those, those ranch, ranch type of estates, but what they're using instead of cabins is, well, one of them has cabins. He, they just put a schoolhouse, they got an old schoolhouse they moved in, but, uh, uh, two or three of the others are using uh, old metal, the round grain bins, the small ones. And they well, converted well, those into uh, little apartments or, or uh, little hotel rooms for the night, which is neat and such. But uh, that's now there's the barn and there's like 12 of these little round grain bins that have been, you know, windows and doors cut into them. If you got the money, make the money. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's a great offer. I think it's a. I think it's a great for the families uh, and bridal parties that they don't have to drink and drive. And um, if if they can make it make it work, I think it'd be fantastic for families. That's so just, just one. Go ahead, Dan. As I said, there's one venue down by us that it's it's the weirdest thing. So like old style barn, and we'll talk. I know we'll get into those details. But then the owner built the house to be immaculate. So you've got this old barn, but right beside it, you've got this immaculate house. And the way he sets it up, he lives in the basement, him and his daughter. 
And then above them, and he soundproofed everything, above them, when you get the place, you get, like, the whole use of, like, the first floor and second floor of the house. So so very similar to that, you know, but instead of being, like, the green bins, here it is, This so you get all those nice feature and creature comforts that you like, but then you also get your barn wedding that you want. And mm-hmm. you get everything just when you rent the weekend. Nice. Hmm. Yeah, that, that would be definitely nice where you can just take a step away for a little bit and be in a comfortable place because some of the barns, these newer that have been in essence built new in the last five years, fully air conditioned and, uh, and comfortable. And this is, uh, this is, this, this is going to jump into uh, one of the topics we'll hit a little bit later, but some of the older ones, like you were mentioning cubby where you can see through the walls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, you're, you're just at the, the, uh, the the uh whatever nature is throwing at you that's what you get and we'll talk about how we deal with that uh, a little bit later um so have you had any cubby uh re- that have been that are they're still the outer shell and they were there were cattle in them and they've been refurbished or have they basically been it's a, the old style or it's been a new building completely um one time that i <laughs> the very bar next to me had like sheep next you know there was literally livestock next to and i looked over and there they were literally hanging out in there that one time and it was, it was on a family establishment they moved the farm equipment to the left and right but mostly i don't have any livestock or anything uh where where i'm at and and as far as but these the barns have they taken those old barns that they used to use and now they're no longer with animals have they remodeled and like insulated or done anything to that effect have you seen that in any of yours no, I just think they just opened it like, okay, they cleared out a lot of stuff, cleaned it up a little and bit, off we you go. Know, and, and off we go. Yeah, nothing, no no upgrades. I think they just appreciated it. It's called the Schaefer uh, Century Barn, and I just think they tried to keep it as rustic as possible. And that's that's where I was kind of headed towards is that up, up here there's one barn that has been remodeled. Uh, they, they added on to it, obviously, for additional space. But they they had gutted it and taken it down to the to the and then they insulated and they re, and then they built it so and the inside looks like it did before, but it went from being you know whatever a ten inch wall to a sixteen inch wall because now there's insulation in there. Otherwise, it's it looks identical to what it was on the inside. But they did that. Most of them are a variation of I can see through those slats if it's an old an old barn. There's one by us that is that did very so much much the same, but it was a historical one. So I think there was also some like leeway of what they could get away with. Mm-hmm. Um, it was also one of the earlier ones, earlier groups to jump on on this trend. Um, but yeah, they I mean, we're talking stone walls and, and everything that they did. And but they they built that up and, and the other edges, they insulated, they added the heat like like I still remember like each step that they did. But you'd walk in and, and it does not look like the old old barn other than the beams hmm. like the floor was redone and they even took the old floor and turned them into pews that they used for the outdoor ceremony oh nice so like they still use all those old pieces but it definitely like you walk in and it's like okay this this is like the Taj Mahal of a barn sure yeah it really becomes wow. becomes something something different uh, so let's kind of work our way through here guys we got a few different areas we're going to hit uh, in tonight's show of, of how we deal with things uh, first off when someone, we're, we're, we're going to be kind of comparing and contrasting from a venue like a, a reception hall. Uh, maybe it's at the the local, you know, the local Ramada where you have a ballroom in the back type of thing, uh, compared to what we run into in the barns. Because there's a, obviously there are many differences between the two. So we'll be, when we're talking about different things, visualize that as you're hearing us talk about those, because that's what we're going to be uh, doing this evening. First off, um, when someone calls and such, labor, uh, labor is a... a there's can be more involved with with a barn type, uh, especially if it's in a hayloft of a barn. Which around here, um, any old style barn, I'm in a hayloft. Uh, but for your guys, is when you hear somebody calling or like, hey, we're going to be doing it at uh, at this barn down the road. Are is labor uh, changes a concern to you? Go ahead, Kevin. Go ahead, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all saw me took it to breath, and I'm like, oh no. Um, there is one loc. There are two locations. Pardon me. Uh, that we do upcharge. I don't have any different any additional labor needs. Um, I just additionally charges because I'm setting up three systems. I got ceremony. I'm dining in one, lo- one location and dancing outside on a back patio. I I don't like the venue, so um, I I raise my price because I'm moving my stuff three times. I'm going mm-hmm. from the ceremony to the dinner, then outside. I don't like when I don't like when a venue separates a party. Sure. Because if it's in the in the middle of July. The kids will be out there dancing. The, fa- the other family members are going to be inside because it's cooler. 
and I just hate it when they separate a party. So I don't have any additional labor needs, but I do raise my fee if I have to bring, you know, more gear and uh, to cover and move stuff three times and stuff. So, yeah. So it's really you don't but, have anyone else with you, but it is more labor from yourself that you're having to put more time into it. Yeah, and and more gear. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so the, when you when you take some additional gear out, and so uh, I do raise my fee, and then explain to them why it's it's different, and you know, and they could either either pay my fee, or I'm really happy to not go back out there. Yeah, no, I understand. I definitely understand. How about Dan? How about yourself? Is the the need for labor is that change for you when it comes to a barn? So it's just me. I don't really, I don't have an assistant that I can lean on. So as a result, there's no extra labor that I that I put in for those um, outside of like, you know, photo booth and that kind of stuff. So um, no need for that. I personally won't get in a hayloft. Like, mm. I grew up on a on a dairy farm. Right. I, I did my time in the barns for that. Um, I'm not getting in a hayloft. And there is two venues in particular that want to put you into a loft type scenario. One is completely renovated. It's not really hayloft. It's more um, like a flat place up top. Um, the other one is, is legitimately like a, like on top of like the, the, an area above where the hayloft would have been, but it's a ladder to get up there. And I'm Goodness. like, no, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, no, like I'm not, if you want me there, I'm on the floor. And if you, if I can't be on the floor, see ya, I'm out. Um, and, and that's just my personal the, the one that I said that was renovated, their suggestion is like, listen, you know, we'll help you get the gear up there. Um, but again, that one's not exactly ideal. So, yeah, to, to the point of labor, I don't have it, so I don't use it. So if you had to go like in a second floor and you're, you have to lug all your gear up a flight of stairs to get to the, the dance area, do you do anything with an extra charge for that? Or basically you're like, well, I'm just going to have to work harder than the times I get to wheel wheel my gear in. If if there's a, a nice, <laughs> for lack of better terms, a nice way to get it up there, um, I'll consider it. And usually, to be honest with you, I, I don't put an added fee on there. Um, I, I can't really think of a venue that would be in that position because, like I said, I, I, I've kind of set myself up because of the rolling booth and, and the other stuff. I just don't want to lug it up. Sure. Um, it's not it's not worth it to me. And I'd rather I'd rather either have the day completely off or, um, you know, or if they're just like, you know, willing to go for it on the floor, then then great. OK, so I'll scenario, another place. we're going to play a game of scenario. What would you do in this scenario? The, the couple, they want to book you. They call and they say, hey, we're going to be having this party in this barn and it's on the second floor. It's going to be, there's it's a, like the stairway to get up there and it's going to be this great party up there. And you say, well, my, my system doesn't go up there. I can't do it very well. And they come back and they say, don't worry. We'll have guys there to help you carry your gear. Cubby, what do you say? Go. What is your date? Oh, sorry. We are book solid for your date. Thank you very much for anything. But, you know, try to call this other <laughs> DJ company because those at the end of the night, those drunk guys are not there to help you. Those guys are not there to carry you down. Um, and it's like I'm with Dan. If uh, and call me prima donna. I don't know. Um, but I am just not. There's there is one venue that we blacklisted. It's 18 steps. All, I counted up yep, 18 I'm... steps all the way up. But I'm just not. I mean. There's an easier way to make money, and with Dan, if I get a night off, I'm I'm happy with it, and I would never put my people through it either. I talked to them, I was like, "You want to work this venue? If you say yes, I'll book you. If you don't want to work that venue, then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put my employees in that type of a situation as well." For sure, Dan. Have you ever people had before a, profit? Have you ever had that situation where someone has has volunteered and you've been like, "Okay, whatever," and it didn't work or did work? I, I don't really, I, when anytime somebody offers, I'm, you know, I appreciate it. I say, thank you very much. You, I've even had some people that offered just to, you know, to take it from, from this end of the venue to that end of the venue to help me put it in my trailer. And I'm like, no, no, no worry. I got this. You know, and a lot of times I, I default to just like, really, it's just a couple of things. Once I get this all in the cart, it's right out. I'll be out in like a couple of seconds. Like, don't worry about it. I appreciate the offer. You guys go do your thing because as Cubby said, like the at end of the night, they're not really in a condition where I want them carrying something. Sure. You know, yeah. I, I just, I base or no case, you know, it doesn't matter. I, I just don't want to put it in their hands from that standpoint. Um, and it's bad because like there's, I'm sure I've turned down some great parties, you know, some events that I would, I would love to be at the one venue. Anytime I was like, before I kind of really got to the point, I'm like, I'm just tired of going up the spiral staircase. Um, before I got to that point, like every one that I did was awesome there. Yeah. But it finally got to a point. I'm like, 
I'm dog tired when I get done here. Not to mention when I'm up, I'm up high and I'm sweating to death. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, no, like it's just not, it's, I, I, I want my time more than I want to be killed. Understandable. All right, guys, let's jump to talking a little bit about when we are in the situations of paying these barns different gear that we need. And Cubby, you started talking about there's situations where you need additional gear. What other things uh, might you be using there that you wouldn't be doing at your local Holiday Inn uh, banquet room? Um, you know, generally in a banquet room, you could if you're doing if they're doing a ceremony in there, then you know um, I don't have to move my system pretty much up, pretty much you know, and I can stay right in one spot. Um, at a barn, it's usually out somewhere out in the dirt. So you, you know, you got battery operated speakers. Um, I use the Evolve, uh, the EV, uh, the newest one. Can't wait to use it this season. Um, where you can hook your microphone in it, and then I also uh, got battery, uh, you know, battery jackery um, for the battery. So it takes it takes a lot more gear um, to go out there and have it somewhere else. So um, I'm I'm planning more gear um, to make sure that I can do the event, and then of course my big system um, uh, stays right where it's, it stays parked. You also mentioned and. Uh... And this would be kind of falling into that gear area, and it's going to also talk about the comfort, and we'll get into the comfort area a little bit uh, a little bit later. But we'll make sure we we got to hit uh, hit that solution when we uh, get to the that side of it. Um, Dan, any additional gear that you take with you when you get into those barns? Well, I mean, uh, uh, your vent you know, to compare the two when you're doing your when you're doing your ballroom venues. Um, typically, you you can double up your system because it's oftentimes in the same room. Barn weddings, they're almost always outside around the corner. Um, you need something to protect from the sun because so your electronics are not getting overheated. Of course, battery powered for everything. I'm running different types of stuff than Cubby is, but it's the same idea, right? So you want battery powered because who knows where the nearest power is and lugging a generator can be a pain in the Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so those are some things. But also I found a lot of our venues that are barns have their cocktails outside. So they're not in the ceremony. They're not in the reception area, but they're somewhere in between. I don't like to go to a full third system. So I'll do one of two things. I'll do, I'll, you know, take one of my speakers, one of my other battery powered speakers, and I'll throw an iPad with it and just let it run. Or I'll, depending upon the proximity to the reception, I'll run a wireless system to that speaker. Um, so that way it's, it's a little bit easier set up. And I have a little bit more control over it because then if I say I want to make an announcement, I tell them, hey, everybody, let's get inside. I don't have to go around. I can just immediately do that on there if I need to. Hey, I think that wireless uh, capability of jumping sound out th through around whatever. And, of course, I've had to run wires on a few occasions from the top of the barn down to the bottom of a barn. But that additional sound support seems to be the most common, uh, whether it is outside or it's up or down or left or right or you know, we got the main and then we have another wing. Well, you've got to have a speaker in that other wing. Otherwise, everything's going to sound muffled if you don't. So definitely um, anything different with lighting that you guys do between between a barn and a... Uh, I was just thinking, I really don't change my light show virtually. Lighting tends to get a little trickier. If you're not familiar, if you're, you know, if you're doing a barn wedding, be very careful just promising that you can do up lighting. If you don't have a strong set of up lights, um, barn wood can suck color like crazy oh yeah the dark and yeah. you think it's going to be beautiful and you get there and you put it up and it's a real dark wood so dust doesn't want to shine um until it gets really dark at night and you know and, and of course depending upon the barn layout if there's slats i mean then you, you, you could be really late before that happens yeah um so so that would be the only lighting issue that that i would say you know keep keep in mind and be aware of um my regular lights are all just pretty much normal um, I don't bring extra because it might be darker in the room or something like that. That's a little different, but yeah, yeah, because yeah, we tried to at the one that we he wanted to do up lighting all the way down the sides and was figuring you know every twelve feet that's kind of traditional, and because of the the deep uh, between the studs, there it's you know those are two by tens or two by twelves whatever they are they're a way uh, thicker deeper wall, and then with that gradual curve of the roof. <laughs> You could see the lights for about two feet, and that was it. And then after that, it was completely gone. So, yeah, it's a great point. Um, uplighting doesn't work. Uh, one thing I just thought of when we were talking, uh, jumped into this a little bit, is when I go and do a barn, my gear is much dirtier. 
how do you guys keep your gear clean or how do you handle that uh ha- handle that going and cubby we'll just keep going coming in right to you first if you don't mind oh wow um um yeah i use uh i use a lot of magic erasers i have a uh, white speakers so um the magic eraser uh, works really really good in keeping it clean um i dust everything you know you have to dust everything off your laptop you use air to get all the dust off it because there's always some sort of dust kicking up even on modern barns it's still somewhat dusty if it's not you know the gravel getting up to the road up to the barn and things um just you have to clean it you just have to keep it clean and and uh uh and yeah do magic you, erasure is my life do life you saver. do things on site do you do things back at home then before the next event what, where's your time frame of really working Be- before the next event i okay. you know let's all face it when you, when you get done with the event you just want to load up and get home um so uh you know, monday first thing monday morning i'm i'm cleaning my cords if, if it was maybe a, a little wet during the ceremony or prior to the ceremony and you, you know drying cords and cleaning them and um and cleaning the gear um depending on how what happens the, the saturday before but usually on mondays i try to take sunday mondays off uh, during the week you know and uh, no business that's that's my weekend sure um so i try to do everything on, on monday sundays for the family mondays uh, for my business uh, stuff that i i don't make calls or you know i answer a few emails but pretty much try to keep it to myself mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dan, uh, cleaning, is there anything you've found that works to keep things clean? Or So I'll just, a lot of times uh, I'll go and let's go to the bathroom real quick and I'll grab some paper towels, wet them kind of damp, just kind of clean some of this, some of my like table type services off that I have. I carry a paintbrush in my one drawer just to kind of go on top of the controller. That was something I learned, um, I think from MJ and and, mm-hmm. and Jimmy and, and a few others that kind of threw out those ideas over the years of like making sure you had that just for clean, cleaning the con, uh, the controller off. Uh, those are the main things. And, and then as Cubby said, you know, air air in the laptops just to kind of make sure that they're keeping it running cool. Most of the stuff I do on site, such as the white the the damp cloth and and the and the paintbrush, just because if I do it sometime during the week on that load in and when everything is kind of getting ready and setting up. It's just kind of like stuff. There's dust in the air at that point. I'd rather get in place, get everything set up and then attack it Mm. because it's also, it's not something that is extremely noticeable. Like I notice it, but dust in in just kind of on the surfaces of of the equipment that I have, it's not really that noticeable. So if I give it kind of a quick once over, it's good. Um, and if for some reason I didn't and didn't get it till until the next event, I'd be okay. Now you go two, three events, that's a different story. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just maybe I'm lucky and not in those super, super dusty places very often. Um, so it, it's usually just a real quick and I'm good. What type of brush? Uh, sorry, John. Take what type mind. of brush you use? Is it like a two inch or one inch uh, when you go to paintbrush? What type? Is it a fine? Is it? it th- it's, just, it's just a one inch, super soft bristle. Um, brush that I that I just that, so basically I can touch and I can kind of go like if I squish down like it'll go in between and underneath the underneath the knobs and that kind of thing. Um, nothing nothing super hard and nothing that's going to just like deteriorate and break on me or or somehow get that hair going in the controller like and leave it there. Yeah, okay. yeah. Sorry, thanks. Yeah, no, yeah. That's so just... keep do, keep doing your thing. <laughs> you keep being you. Um. Yeah, the, my, my biggest thing I found over the years when I came to that, yeah, there's dust on the gear. That's that's one part of it. But my speaker cables have gotten, or the XLR cables have just been, sometimes they're just like horrible to the point where it's like, okay, I'm not putting them in a case. I'm just like going to carry them and throw them in the back of the truck, get home, and I'm going to have to pull out literally water and wash them down. Um, that's happened numerous times between extension cords and uh, XLR cables. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's just dust and managing that, as you guys mentioned there. That's what I have experienced also. Um, let's talk a bit about, is there any unusual prep? That Is your prep different between a venue, a, a uh, indoor you know, um, banquet venue, compared to a barn? Cubby, go ahead. I don't think there's any, oh, yeah. I don't think there's anything that I do differently to prep because of venue versus a barn. However, there's some things that I prep more for certain barns um, only because of knowing the layout, knowing the people, knowing what I need to prepare, making sure that all my ducks are in a row because, um, you know, this barn isn't just somebody who rents the place, but they also have 
a, a person that's there to help, you know, almost like day of coordinator type of stuff. So for those, I prep more in advance just so that I can, because I know I'm going to be working with someone versus some versus one where I'm not going to have somebody. So then it's more, okay, I'm taking care of everything. So I just got all my notes and I'm good. Okay. Um, so that that's more than it is because it's a barn. Case by case situation there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cubby, is that about similar in your world? Yeah, if I'm going to a place I've never been before, whether it's a barn or even a venue, I will uh, I will stalk their Facebook page. I'll look at different pictures. I'll check things out, see what the layout for the ceremony looks like. Type of you know, um, I'll call on Thursday. Maybe send them an email. Good thing about DJ Event Planner, it sends out emails to the venue and lets them know what my needs are prior in. Um, but it's uh, yeah, I, I will I will stalk the place and see like see if I can find the ceremony site and and then uh, when then when I talk to them on Thursday um about my arrival time and things um i'll ask him about the power what the power situation is down at, you know down at the ceremony site do you have power how far away is it um and it's only on places that i've never been before but on a place that i've been before i'm with dan i'm familiar with it familiar with staff familiar with the location i wouldn't say i don't, I don't think there's any additional prep that i do mm -hmm. next this is a big area i think when it comes to barns especially in our area is managing your personal comfort or your comfort for the day um, many venues are, are very well managed to the, the, uh, the ballrooms in the area, but barns become a completely different beast at times. Uh, somebody, and I want to throw this one out there. Somebody on Facebook mentioned this bug spray, uh, for is one of their oh. big things that they have. Um, and I, that's why I put this in the personal comfort areas that, that in, in the old barns that we have in our area, that once the sun goes down and it becomes cooler out or it's starting to cool off outside, and it's hot as I'll get out inside, those doors and windows open. There's no screens on any of those. And the next thing you know, I'm being attacked by mosquitoes because, you know, there's the, the guy there by the bright lights where the rest of the room is somewhat dark. Yay. So <laughs> bug spray. I don't, and again, I don't know who said that. It was somebody on Facebook because it just said uh, Facebook users, all it says on the uh, thing. But uh, thank you for throwing that out as a reminder. Yeah. So comfort. Uh, what do you do? What do you bring for your own personal comfort? Uh, and for that uh, cubby i got props john nice uh, i use a little van and i got two of them one for me and one for the bride and um these got you get them on amazon 15 eight, eight bucks if you wait till amazon prop day buy a bunch of them um this will uh, because it's usb it'll charge uh, my usb so my bride gets the one with the full battery mine runs through the wedding um, I put this on my stand, use these to clap around, and it just blows right in my face, and it is a beautiful thing. Um, my bride loves it during pictures and photos, and like, oh my god, you're so thoughtful. Um, 15 bucks will make you a superstar with your bride in July, and she's trying to keep her makeup clean and stuff. Um, I know I've guys that uh, take some of those yellow, they're yellow and black fans that kind of blow up in the back or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I've done that on um, not so much a wedding, but I've done it on a corporate events. Um, that I've been outside doing events for um and I have, I have one of those fans that blow up they're kind of like a small black and down i couldn't even tell you who makes it um but i have a fan for that and, and for an outdoor um, event but not a wedding i don't i don't know why i don't take it to a wedding but because i have this um, yeah but that's that's what i have and as far as do you do anything you know we've, we've talked in the past about uh, mats for standing is that something you still take when in the barns and such too I, you know, I still to this day, I'm going to go buy one because I don't, I haven't, I don't so, have one. And so, uh, I am going to go get one. You guys kind of talked to me into it a couple weeks ago. So, um, then on Saturday at my wedding, I'm like, yeah, that would, this kind of sucks. So, uh, I'm going to give a I'm going to give, uh, Matt, uh, a try. Um, and I like Dan's idea with the cords because so many put venues now are going, you can't, you can't even, even with gaffer's tape will not let you tape cords down. Yeah. So I like Dan's idea, um, how he puts those uh, small things across, yeah. uh, for his cords. The stair, uh, the, the carpet uh, patch uh, pieces from stairs. Yes. Dan, comfort. How do you manage that? So, so Cubby mentioned the fan that blows up the back. I, the one I have is, I think, is Lasco. Um, it was, I think, John, you recommended it a couple of years ago, and and it, I picked it up. And and any time I'm in an outdoor place or I'm in a barn, it comes with me. And, and it's been very similar to that to that point. I wouldn't even go so far. I wouldn't say it's a lifesaver, but I've been in some like the barn's 100 degrees. I'm in a suit and I'm drenched. Um, I had one two summers ago where the father of the bride was having like almost heat stroke. Oh, my goodness. Type of issues. Um, 
I had mentioned a while ago to the bride and, you know, to the mom, I said, if you guys need this, like at any point during the day, you want to come over and like just kind of chill by my fan, um, go for it. You know, feel free to come on over. The, the venue has some fans set up, but this was like, like when this is on, I'm comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, and when the, when the dad started having problems, they ran over, can we get your fan? Yeah. Yeah. Here, take it, take it. And then I found out what's going on. I was like, Oh yeah. Um, so that's one thing. That's probably the only thing that is different. Like I take the mats to everything. Um, there's other pieces that I do, you know, kind of along the way, but the, the fan is the big one. I will say one thing that I'm trying to make a change for this year. Mm -hmm. So a few years ago, I had a three piece suit. I always wore a three piece suit. It was, it was nice. It had the vest, it had the, it had the jacket. And what would basically happen is when I would get into a certain point, I would take the jacket off. And especially for like the dance portion, and that would be great. Reuse, I needed to, I needed to replace them. I decided, you know, three piece weren't really the thing anymore. So I went with two piece suits. Well, I take the jacket off and if I've been hot and sweating, it's <laughs> oh, just no. showing. It's, you know, oh, even no. if it's a white shirt, it's just showing. Um, so what I'm, what I'm, what I found is is some vests that I can purchase that are that are kind of color coded to a degree. So that way it doesn't have to match my suit to be able to go with my suit. And I've been picking up a few of those with the idea of these hot summer weddings. I don't need the jacket. I'm just going right for the vest. And that's what I'm wearing and try to make myself as comfortable as possible. One other thing that I'll do when I know it's going to be an extra hot day is I bring extra, extra underwear, extra shirt, and extra um, undershirt, mm-hmm. basically to make sure that I'm as fresh as can be if I need to be, so that you know I, I don't ideally want to have to do that. But if if while cocktails are going on, I run out to my car or hop in my trailer real quick and I change, I can come out a little bit fresher, you know, after having sweated through the ceremony and everything. So Dan, Dan, you brought up uh, underwear. Um, Duluth has chiller underwear. They like chilled. Like the material is like really cool. It's pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie to you. It it really Duluth. does. It does work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, Duluth Trading Company. Even even these uh, even these shirts. The this is not a cotton T-shirt I'm wearing. These are one of the uh, the the cooling T-shirts that are a poly whatever blend. Yeah, all that stuff does work. It's crazy. Oh. I'll have, I'll have, I had the cotton t-shirt on literally today. I had the cotton t-shirt on for a while and I, and I went worked out and came back and then I, I put the got cleaned up and put this on and it's like, it feels 10 degrees cooler in here. And Lori's like, no, it's actually a little warmer in the house. Different material makes a big, big difference. So, um, you, you mentioned, of course, the, the fans, uh, put the link, I put a couple of uh, example fans in the, the, uh, links there for you guys to check out. Um, yeah, the the heat is the heat is one thing, but uh, one of the the uh, I've run into probably my last couple of well, not midsummer ones, but some of these barns that we've been going into late into the fall, and and trying to stay warm has become an issue, and I literally have got a small uh, not a milk house heater, but I mean a little fifteen hundred watt electric heater, and I put that under my table because I've got a I have a that particular table had as a skirt on it, and I basically kind of hold the back of that skirt open so that it warms under the table and then it kind of comes out towards me because there have been times where my hands i'm literally wearing my jacket uh th- you know one of my thinner jackets but i'm wearing my jacket and i'm wearing the touch the gloves with the little touch fingers because i'm i'm cold it's you know 50 some degrees in there and because i can see out to the back here you know it's it's definitely cold i've had a co- i had I th- this was like one wedding I did years ago and, and I started carrying it and then I got self-conscious about it, but I had some fingertip gloves, mm. not, not like the touchscreen ones, but like our fingerless, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever they're called. Um, just, uh, it, my hands were covered. Um, and that helped in, in that particular moment, but I was, I felt weird because here I am dressed up in the suit and yet I'm wearing like gloves, like in the, you know, that type of look. So I got self-conscious, but, but yeah, I've had, I've had some of those, especially those barns, like Scubby said, you know, with the slats and everything, like those are the first ones that like freeze up. I, mm-hmm. I kind of luck out most of my late fall ones are in the, the more modern style ones where if they bring in the heaters, it'll hold the heat. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, this one particular one, it was like the third week of September 
like not a week and you would have thought would have been and it got to like 40 and like i still remember my hands like when i was like doing my controllers my fingers had almost like frozen up like just trying to yeah getting stiff yeah, yeah. oh wow yeah, it was it was just, just from just from the way I know. Granted, everybody was dancing, so they were warm. Mm -hmm. But here behind where I was at, I was just like, Let's just keep it going. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I've experienced that a couple of times, and it's like, ugh, that's. Um, let's see. I want to take it down. Is there anything? Do you guys do anything different contractually uh, between the two? We talked a little bit about uh, maybe. A, some people do additional charges if there's steps. So that would obviously be a contractual thing. If you needed more gear, that would be. But is there anything else specifically? I'm thinking uh, when it comes to liability, is there anything that might be different in your eyes on risk with a barn compared to a a uh, regular venue or a uh, a traditional venue? You want me to start? Again? Go ahead, Cubby. Um, mine already already has power limits in it, like so many amps that I need because I've I've played those few Morton buildings and barns that have been renovated, and I've blown circuits because they brought in those big white roasters and they suck a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Um, I I just went to power in all of my contracts, and I get people come back me and they're maybe in a hotel. And I'm like, oh, don't worry, you'll be fine. You know, yeah. Um, this is for outdoor weddings. This is for outdoor, you know, like tent weddings, and this is what my power needs are, and it just covers me there. But that'd be the only thing contractually I would change. Um, or, or make sure that I had in there mm -hmm. was power work, power requirements um, for me for my system. Dan, anything that you've done? I mean, same deal. Just power requirements are in there, and they're they're for all. Um, just just be on the safe side type of thing. Um, I, I, I'm not about to add anything. That, I can't think of anything offhand of outside of that that really kind of gets in the way of barn versus any place else. And mine mine. The power went into the contract because of these types of events. The more the backyard type of things, you know, where it was in somebody's somebody's pole shed. But yeah, it, it's in there, and it definitely has to be there because a couple of the uh, the venue barns that we have are, you know, we get upstairs and it's a two prong plug. They don't have a grounded plug up there. And it's like really, I've got to use this. And they're like, well, unless you want to try to get power from downstairs, it's like, yeah, I've got a twelve gauge uh, three way pop. Yeah, I'm gonna drop that sucker right down there, and I'm gonna pull power from downstairs. <laughs> Thanks, but no thanks. Um, that, uh, we'll go this route. So, but yeah, the, the electricity was probably my biggest uh, biggest concern. Also, um, I'm gonna jump down. Um, clients' expectations when they're booking a a venue uh, a venue ballroom compared to when they're booking a barn. What do you think the difference in expectations for the day might be? And Dan, I'm going to have you start with this one, if you if you don't mind, because uh, I think you you've uh, you might have uh, have a couple of thoughts on this one. Yeah. So so a lot of times when I run into the the venue the venue style, they're looking for more elegance. They're looking for more um, polish. Where when they're you know and they, and they still with the party aspect to it, but it seems like it seems like they they focus more on the look, right? And and when it comes to the barn, it becomes more of you know we're we're having a big party for our friends. We're having it you know, and it, it doesn't seem to be they still want that you know they still want the class, but it's not quite I don't think to that elegance. And and they still talk about the way the place looks and and different things like that, but it's just kind of that that difference in the air of the way that they are, um, with the exception of and and I do have occasional things where when it comes to the venue the like you know, i had one last year who was like yeah um i don't want to deal with that heat in the summer so i'm getting married inside like i want to be comfortable and, you know that's my reason for for planning a, an indoor indoor place yeah the barns are pretty but i want to be comfortable at my wedding mm -hmm. and, and so there is some of that i think where you, that you run into but those are the other big big notices i saw was just the that air of elegance, I guess. We'll sure. Kevin, I'm going to just change it a little bit. Uh, the client expectations when it comes to alcohol and the party, when you're dealing with venues, or you know, like a, a ballroom and a barn, how did the client's expectation of amount of alcohol and how alcohol will affect the day change for us in the Midwest? I think there are more like 72 cases of bush light <laughs> Saturday night. Yeah. Um, I think the barn, the barn brides are a little bit more laid back. I think they, you know, they're looking for a good time and a party and uh, they're not looking for all, you know, the, the table decorations seem to be a little more simpler. Um, the bouquets seem to be a little bit more simpler. Um, not that the barn is simple, but it's just 
less it's more like more of a party like dan said and then the ones that are doing the venues very uh, high and elegant you know so that's where you you know just yeah two different brides i think like i said i think dan nailed it when he said that um barn brides are a lot easier and um that people would rather buy an extra keg of beer than 10 up lights or something mm-hmm. you know um so yeah i think they think the brides are a lot of a lot more fun and easier to get along with so along the crowd too they're not so uptight it's not so hoity-toity yeah yeah you just definitely see that but the the amount of alcohol uh, yeah. at many of the barns especially here in the midwest it will be a they're not 72 cases but you know it'll be a four to six kegs of beer consumed over the night and you take that same group of people and you put them in at the local uh, uh ramada you know ballroom and they might go through two kegs of beer in the course of the night it's just a a different expectation and and maybe it's just because you can walk out you know you go out the barn you can walk around a corner you can go puke your guts out you know at the farm and you're like woo, i'm back at it whereas you know <laughs> the venue you have to walk down the hall and that just hit the bathroom you know, yeah to hit the bathroom that just takes all the fun out of it so i don't know now i'm curious with with your as far as the ruling might be concerned there like with your, with your venues at these places where you're having like the 72 cases of beer and everything else Who's the bartenders? Or is so it last, just on a table and everybody's going up and just like out of a bucket type of stuff? <laughs> said table. They use horse troughs this last Saturday night. Yeah, I was going to say uh, <laughs> so, cattle troughs, yeah. Yeah. It's like throw it in there, throw some ice in there, yeah. and then you just go, uh, no, that's not the one I want. Uh, uh, yeah. My hand is frozen. Oh, I got another hand. Yeah. Hand said tables. So, no, it's uh, the DIY one is uh, there was this Saturday, but a lot of them, like I said, even a lot of the modern, modern barns, modern, what do you want to call them? The refurbished barns they built as a barn. Um, they all have liquor license, and so they do. They yep. do monitor their drinking, um, and some of them require police officers if you know yep. um, when you start like eight o'clock, eight to eleven, or seven to eleven, or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, there's a lot more alcohol, but I, it, it's uh, they're serving it and they're watching, they're monitoring. Um, just some of these big cowboys can drink a lot of beer. Oh know. yeah, but that I yeah. just the only time I've noticed where there's been an absorbent amount has been when it's just super hot. The rest of the time, it seems to be on par with what i've had the venue so that's why i was just curious as far as because i also know that some of my venues that i'm thinking of they run a pretty tight ship as far as who they're who they allow in as bartenders um and and basically you know what i i still remember like i was i was there saturday and i was walking up and and the owner was just like i wish you would have been here last week and i was like why and she said she said the DJ just he he was in such a way that people just drank like they just drank so much like they were walking to the cars and there was vomit through the we had to like bring buckets of water out to the stones and just kind of try and wash it away. She's yeah. like, it was just insane. Um, and she's like, yeah, she's like that bartender will never be back. Hmm. Crazy. She might have been getting a lot of tips. She could have been. Yeah. Getting getting paid for, you know, burning the drinks once in a while. You never yeah. know. One last uh, area, guys, I want to hit. Um, many times in these barns, especially the ones that, uh, that that are some of the old style, they might have some windows in there that can't be uh, dealt with too well. And daylight. When we're doing these things, it could be daylight. In Minnesota, it, it'll still be light at 10 o'clock at night, uh, you know, as we get into get into summer. How do you guys deal with the, uh, with, with the potential being out in that element and not being dark until later and getting that dance floor and getting the party going. I think for me, it's, it's just coaching the bride and groom, like wherever you guys are at, where the party's at. If you're at the bar drinking, you're guessing we at the bar drinking. If you're out by a bonfire, they'll be out by the bonfire. Um, if you're looking for a big dance party, be on the dance floor. Um, we can't really help sunlight. <laughs> you know, uh, we have to kind of deal with it. But I think if you coach uh, the bride and groom and share with them, you know, that you know bring your fun ants make sure the bridesmaids are out there because you can't always do so much with groomsmen um but you know make sure your fun ants your moms and you guys are on the dance floor they'll come find you on the dance floor and, and dance with you um and uh because like i said you can't really do much about the sun mm-hmm. and, and and the brightness of it I, I found that a lot of times anymore it seems like the couples don't care as much about the light as they do maybe in a venue. Like when I'm doing, when I'm doing a ballroom or something like that, we get to the point of being able to, to dance and it's like, all right, where's that light switch? You know, or those, somebody will come over to me. Can you turn down the lights? When I'm at a barn, it doesn't seem to matter. 
I, I don't know if it's just kind of the implied like listener can't do anything outside or even just I mean, I've even had some that want to dance underneath the stars type of idea. Well, you know, they like they want to they want to carry it out the front door and dance out there. Um, so I don't think they really care as much about that sunlight aspect as oftentimes we make it out to be. Hmm. I think a lot of times you just, oh, it's got to be dark. You know, it's got to be that club aspect where it's dark and, and what this is. a It's a different type of vibe. This is a party. This is a celebration. This isn't trying to hook up with someone. So you're hoping they don't look, see how, what you look like. So it's, you know, it's slightly different. And I think that's why they don't, there's not as much of an issue getting them started. Now I have more of an issue over the heat, I think, than the sun. I think when the heat is, but when the sun is creating a hotness there, like is, if that the spot is from the window and it's just beating, that's different than just it's light in there. Sure. And it creates a problem. Yeah, I like the, Kevin, uh, when you mentioned the idea of uh, coaching in advance. And I think that there's many times where that needs to be a conversation, regardless if it's a barn or venue, is having that. If you're, yeah, the, so do you two, do you like to dance? Well, not really. Okay. Uh, do you like to? No, not really. No. Then why are we having a dance? Well, we're gonna. <laughs> we want to have a great party. It's like yes, but the party, the really good weddings you've been to. Did you? Where were the bride and groom most of the night? Oh, they were on a dance floor because they were having so much fun. But you just said you don't like to dance. No, we don't like to dance. We're not gonna be on a dance. The coaching can make or break an event when it comes to that. Yeah, when I wrap up all my consultations, it's like, what can I expect? Are your families dancers, not dancers? And then I just share with them like exactly what i said you the more you, you guys are on the dance floor your guests will follow those have to come out and talk to you mm -hmm. gentlemen i think our time is up Mate, fast uh, chill rooms next djntv.com slash chill hanging with howie is there uh tomorrow night uh tuesday night with ben stowe we are going to have the conversation about electricity we're going to talk about watts once again we're going to talk about amperage once again we're going to find out well, we're going to find out all that information about, you know, there's this thing on the wall, this outlet. What can I expect to get out of it? And what can that do? Uh, we're going to dig into that tomorrow night a little bit uh, with Ben Stowe, and that'll be at 9 o'clock Eastern. And then 10 o'clock tomorrow night, they'll be back in the chill room with the Tuesday Night Music Show. Again, that's at djntv.com slash chill. Wednesday night will be uh, one of the Howie shows, and one of the uh, Tuesday Night Music shows will go live on Wednesday at 9 and 10 o'clock Eastern for you guys to check out. As well as there's different things that we drop in the morning. Uh, Bill Herman's got a show. Dan's got a spot he does. i got a, a spot that we do, and we drop uh, what, some of our questions. So you can come in a couple of times a day onto the YouTube channel, and there's going to be some uh, new content pretty much every day. There's something new that drops uh, throughout the week. So check it out. Guys, I think we're going to have to go. Oh. All right. Well, listen, you got a lot of stuff that you can be checking out this week. And if you don't, well, that's on your fault, right? There's plenty of content for you to uh, to absorb and learn to make yourself better. Thank you very much for hanging out with all of us. John, Cubby, and myself, very appreciate it because without you tonight, just uh, would be kind of boring. So have yourself a good one. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Bye, everybody.